Yep, it's a skunk. We got one. Oh gosh, I'm hit. I'm hit. My backyard is gigantic, containing many fascinating wild animals. Beyond the pool, the greenhouse, the garden, and all that crap, lies a vast expanse of grass, trails, and eventually a forest. I've set up five wildlife cameras to observe the animals on the property. Creatures including raccoons, possums, deer, mink, coyotes, bobcats, and of course, the dreaded skunk. The spray of a skunk is horrendous, a chemical reaction between hydrogen and sulfur. The methanol contained within will blind another animal or human. Another reaction between carbon and hydrogen remains odorless until you make the mistake of adding water in a futile attempt to wash off the smell. That only makes it worse. So I'm back here in the woods where we planted one of our wildlife cameras, uh, way back on our property. So you could do an entire lesson on the chemistry of skunk spray. We're gonna do the calculus of the skunk spray. So here's the issue. We've been having these skunks come up to our house and try to dig under our house, and that's really bad for your foundation. So we've decided to be humane, of course, because I love animals. We're gonna trap the skunks in a humane trap. We're gonna bring them back here into the forest, and then we're gonna release them. Now here's my question though. I've seen many videos where people release a skunk and it turns right around and sprays them. So I was asking my wife, I said, you know, I used to be a high school track star. I'm much older and much slower now, but I used to be pretty fast. I can still run decently. Could I outrun the spray of a skunk or will it catch up to me? And my wife said, you know what? You've got two degrees in mathematics. You're a calculus teacher. I'm sure you can figure it out. Well, I never backed down from a mathematical challenge. So now it's time for the calculus behind the skunk spray. I returned to the house and scoured the internet for the velocity of skunk spray. Could I outrun this? There was no information on the internet. And then a clue. One site listed the rate at which the volume of skunk spray expands. I was in. The radius around a skunk makes half a sphere called a hemisphere and expands rapidly outward, eventually encompassing an entire neighborhood. But how fast was the radius coming toward me? I needed to find the rate of the radius. In other words, R prime. Yep, it's a skunk. We got one. All right, so I just caught my first skunk. We're gonna do some quick calculations here in the classroom, and we're gonna show you how I use real life calculus to figure out can I outrun the smell of a skunk or not? All right, first of all, remember it's a hemisphere of stink that comes out from the skunk, right? So what is the volume of a hemisphere? Well, the volume of a sphere is something you're supposed to know for the ACT, by the way. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Why r cubed? Because it's volume, it's three dimensional, right? The power tells you what dimension you're in. Now, a hemisphere is one half times four thirds pi r cubed. The four and the two can cross cancel. In other words, half of four thirds is two thirds, of course. All right, so two thirds pi r cubed. Now, this hemisphere is not just sitting there. The stink doesn't just surround the skunk, it's growing. 
it's moving, it's changing. Anything that's moving, changing, a verb, any kind of verb in calculus is a derivative, right? So the derivative of V is dV dt. Mr. Way, why not dV dx? Because it's with respect to time, isn't it, right? This is a rate problem, a very special kind of derivative, right? dV dt, all right? Or colloquially written as V prime, of course, you can also write that. The three comes down, cross cancels with the three, and you get two pi r squared times the chain rule of r, which is dr dt, or colloquially written as r prime. All right, so do we have any clues that we can plug into this equation? Well, we have that one clue from the internet. The only thing I could find out there on skunks mathematically, 60,000 cubic feet per second is how fast this hemisphere of stink is growing, right? So, where do we put it? Is that R prime, is that R, or is that V prime? Well, it's per second, per anything means it's a rate, means it's a derivative. So it's either R prime or V prime. Hey, cubic feet, it's three dimensional. If it's three dimensional, that means that it is the volume changing. Clearly, it's not the radius changing. It's definitely V prime or dV dt. Now, one more thing. What else do we need? We've got unknown R, unknown R prime, and we're trying to find one of those, and we should know the other one. R prime is how fast the radius is growing. Isn't that what I'm trying to find? How fast is this radius of the hemisphere changing because that radius is chasing me. And when I release this skunk, I'm gonna be running and that radius is going to be growing and going after me, right? And I don't wanna get blinded or have anything else happen to me, all right? I mean, can you just imagine what happens when you get hit with skunk smell? I don't want that to be me. So, how fast is the radius chasing me? A radius is one dimensional. A radius would be feet to the first per second, or just feet per second, because it's one dimensional, it's a string, right? It has a length, but it has no thickness. Okay, and then if we're looking for R prime, but we do know V prime, we also need to know R. What's R? R would be the radius of stink. Well, that depends on how long ago it sprayed. Why don't we take the initial spray? Because that's what's gonna happen. If it sprays, I'm gonna be running away from it. And so the initial R, what did, what did it say? What was the maximum spray of a skunk at first? It's 15 feet, right? Up to 15 feet. So let's just go ahead and plug in 15 feet. If this skunk is really powerful that we're about to release, it's gonna shoot out 15 feet and then it's gonna grow from there. So we'll just take like the initial R for an example. And then we'll figure out as soon as it hits 15 feet and then it starts expanding in the smell, how fast is it going after me? Okay, so 60,000 cubic feet per second, but you don't have to put the, the units in, just put the 60,000 in, but I wanna show you a little trick. Equals two pi 15 squared one of our perfect squares, 225, R prime, if you wanna write R prime for shorthand for dr dt. Okay, and the 225, let's see, the 15, 15 was in feet, right? But when you square it, it becomes 225 square feet. Now I want you to see something interesting. Let's divide both sides by two pi 225. Or 2 times 225, double 225 is what, 450? So 60,000 equals 450 pi r prime. And remember, this side is currently in square feet because we squared a feet amount. And then this is cubic feet per second. All right. And then finally, divide both sides by 450 pi to get r prime by itself. 
So R prime equals 60,000 divided by 450 pi. And so the radius is going to be moving or chasing me at whatever this is right here. It's an irrational number that we'll plug into our calculator. And we're going to approximate. And I put that into a calculator and I get 42.441 approximately. 42.441 what? Well, if you keep track of the units, didn't we divide the 450 pi under the other side? So the feet squared that came with it secretly got divided under the cubic feet per second. So cubic feet and square feet cross cancel to leave you with feet to the first per second. How about that? If you keep track of the units, they actually come out to be the correct units feet per second, which makes sense that the radius would be moving in feet per second because it's one dimensional. How about that? Now, can I outrun 42.441 feet per second? Okay, well, we need to convert that to miles per hour because that's usually how we think, at least in America, we think about miles per hour, okay? They may not do that in many other countries, but we're stuck to miles per hour in this country. All right, kilometers per hour in Canada and other places, right? So you could either do the old conversion back in Integrated 3 where we learned to convert feet per second into miles per hour, or you could just go to Google, type that in and have Google convert it for you. And I did that 28.937 miles per hour. Can I run almost 29 miles per hour and outrun this stupid skunk? Well, the fastest man in world history was Usain Bolt, who you may have seen in the Olympics. Yes, Usain Bolt, next time, the nine, they give it. 27.8 miles per hour. That was the world record fastest human being ever. So not even Usain Bolt can run that fast. So I sheepishly admitted to my wife, I cannot outrun this skunk. If the smell comes out and envelops me, I'm toast. And she said, you're staying at a hotel if that happens because you're not bringing that stink into this house. Because they say it takes like a week to wash off the smell of numerous showers and using tomato juice and vinegar and all kinds of things like that. So I'm going to be in trouble. Let's go see if we can release it without it spraying. I'm hauling it back here into the woods. We're going to try to release it. And as you can see by the mathematics, there is no way to outrun the spray of a skunk. Not even if you're the fastest man in the world. So we're just gonna hope for the best and hope it doesn't turn and spray. Come on, little buddy, you're free. You're free, come on. Slow and steady, slow and steady. Don't spray, don't spray. Back, 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 back. No, back off, back off, no, no, no. Hey, 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 go the other way, go the other way. No, 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 I'm not your enemy here. I need to get the trap. I gotta get the trap. He's turned, he's turned around. Oh gosh, I'm hit, I'm hit, I'm hit. Oh my gosh, I'm blind. <laughs> Just kidding, actually. JK, as the kids say these days, actually the skunk turned, but it actually didn't spray, thank goodness. I don't know why, because when they turn, they usually spray. I added in a little spray sound effect and made it sound like it sprayed, but it actually didn't, thank goodness. So the skunk did walk away, it's way up there now, and I would say that's a success. So now you know about the calculus behind the skunk spray. How about that? See you next time on another episode of Bonus Math. Bonus ourselves are there any ingredients we know ingredients ingredients that we can put into this stupid cubic not centimeters dumbbun i meant to call myself dumbbun but i said dumbbun because when i was a child and i was like five years old i had this puppet i had this puppet When I was five years old, I had this puppet, and it was a rabbit with big buck teeth. <laughs> and on the back of it, its name was Dumbbun. It was the dumbest thing ever. Who manufactured this rabbit with big buck teeth and called it Dumbbun? And then that just 
came out a second ago after like 30 years, it just came back to my head.